In this video, we discuss arrays or their equivalent in the design of solutions to simple problems. An array can be thought of like a variable that can contain more than one data item, for example, storing a list of names. We can do this by allocating a contiguous part of the memory for the purpose of storing that data. Contiguous means all the data is stored together, one element after the other. Note that lists are different to arrays because lists are not contiguous. Our program will know the position in memory where our array starts. In this case, it's address 05. The program uses an index relative to this start point to allow us to easily access the array's contents. So Jane is actually stored at index 2. Remember, in most programming languages, arrays and lists are zero index, although this can vary. So let's look at some examples of setting up an array. So this line highlighted in green sets up a one-dimensional array of strings called countries and assigns it the initial values of Angola to index 0, Austria to index 1 and Belgium to index 2. And again, note how the indexes start at 0 and not 1. Python also uses arrays, but allows programmers to use them as lists. And that's why most people think Python only supports lists. To output Austria from the array, we would need to use index 1, as it represents the second item in the country's array. Arrays are what we call a static data structure meaning you can't change the size of an array once you've set it up. This is a good example of Python using an array like a list. Although you can't tell because it's abstracted from you, Python is moving the entire data structure to a new part of the memory to ensure it is contiguous if it needs to be. We can then insert an item into a new location at the end of the array using its index. You can visualize a two-dimensional array as a table with two sets of indexes, one for the rows and another for the columns. Note that although lists in Python can support more than one data type, that's heterogeneous, for the exam you need to understand that arrays technically can only support a single data type, homogeneous. Most other languages support arrays as unique data structures and only allow a single data type to be stored. OK, so let's have a look at accessing a two dimensional array. So here we can say countries and we supply two index values, so 0, 0, and we can see that contains the data item Angola. Countries 0, 1 contains the value 1246700. Now, note here that when we say 0, 1, this could also be referring to Austria. And it depends on how you choose to store the data. It doesn't matter whether you visualize rows or columns first, providing you're consistent in your program. In the exam, make sure to read any questions carefully to be sure you know which way round the array is being stored. Here's a final example. So we've gone 1, 1, and that would access the value 8, 3, 8, 7, 1. So although we've presented one and two dimensional arrays here, there's no problem with going beyond that. And we can quite easily visualize arrays of multiple dimensions. So on the left here, we have a one dimensional array set up with five elements called my array. And we've highlighted in light blue accessing array index number two. On the right, we have our two dimensional array and we've set that up five comma five. And again, we've accessed effectively the middle item here by accessing my array two comma two. Well, here we have an example of a three dimensional array you can visualize it like a cube. We supply three indexes when setting it up, five comma five comma five. To access an item of the array, just like before, we now have to provide three values. We can go beyond 
two-dimensional arrays. And you can sometimes think that that would be very difficult to visualize as we obviously live in a three-dimensional world. But we could simply visualize a four-dimensional array as follows. Here we provide four values. The first value describes which cube we're accessing and the next three tell us which cell of that cube we're accessing. And of course, we can take this abstraction further. So here's effectively how we'd visualize a fifth dimensional array. We're supplying two values to say which row and column to select our cube, and then three further values to select an individual cell within that cube. Now, you're not going to get fourth and fifth dimensional arrays in your exam, but it's just showing you we don't have limits in computer science when it comes to these sort of things. The computer is able to deal with a fifth dimensional array just as easily as it deals with a one or two dimensional array. As I already mentioned, lists are Python's version of arrays. Python also supports another similar data structure known as tuples. Both lists and tuples share many similar concepts with arrays with a few key differences. The main difference between arrays, lists and tuples can be quite confusing. Tuples are lists that can't be changed once created. They're a fixed size. They're set at the point of creation and they're therefore said to be what we call an immutable data structure. Lists, on the other hand, can be changed after being created. For example, you can add or remove items. They're not a fixed size, but rather they can grow or shrink in size. Lists are therefore said to be a mutable data structure. You can actually see this in practice here. So on the left, we have a window showing Python. And here's an example of a list. We initially set it up with two data items in it, cat and dog. And you can see we've output that. We then go on to add a third data item and we simply use dot append in order to do that. Then we realize we've made a mistake. So we update the third data item, replacing its contents from mat to bat. Note how the data structure has grown in size, something we can't do with static data structures like arrays or tuples. Furthermore, Note how we've changed the contents of the list, something we can't do with tuples because tuples are immutable. Here's an example of a tuple in Python. Initially, we set it up with two data items just like before and we've output them cat and dog. We then retrieve the second element of the tuple. So that's animals index one and it retrieves dog. Next, we attempt to update the item in the second element. So we say animals1 equals mouse, but doing so produces an error because tuples are immutable data structures, so they cannot be changed once they've been created. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the differences between arrays, lists, and tuples?